Mark Bell from supertraining.tv. We have a uh, dynamic effort squat session that we did this past weekend, squatting with the uh, cambered bar and uh, about three chains per side. Got uh, myself, Greg Buffington, Tristan Scholl, and Ryan Spencer in this uh, first group here. The uh, cambered bar is uh, a great bar to have. It uh, takes a lot of stress off the shoulders, <coughs> changes the center of gravity a lot. The, the uh, barbell will kind of flip around as you're squatting. Uh, makes you work your lower back a lot more. You can see through this whole workout, we're talking a lot of shit to each other. It's just kind of the way it goes. You can see Tristan Shaw has uh, no limitations with his mobility and uh, using similar weights throughout this workout. He, um, he kind of kicks my ass on this day. But Tristan is uh, just gifted at, at squatting. And uh, he's got, like I said, got great mobility. He's able to get down to that box and maintain his position. Powerlifting, uh, so much of it is about maintaining your, posi your position. You'll see in an upcoming issue of uh, Power that uh, there's actually a study that's been done on squat suits and it shows that there was not a significant change in concentric force. There's not a significant change in the upward force uh, when you're wearing a squat suit. But there's a huge change in the eccentric forces, which kind of shows you that your positioning is a huge part of the uh, of wearing that powerlifting gear. And if you don't have good mobility, your uh, positioning is going to be off with or without the powerlifting gear. If you have poor mobility when you put the powerlifting gear on, your mobility will, will even be further flawed. So it's something that it's foolish to ignore. It's something that I've worked on. And since I've worked on it, I went from a 954 squat to 1,036 and hoping to go around 11, 1108 or so in the next meet. We'll see what happens. But uh, continuing to work on the things that you suck at is going to continue to make you better and better. And that's what this is all about. So on this date, our main goal is speed. We're trying to get some volume in. We're trying to keep good form. And you see my head position there is uh, neutral slash downish. Everyone's different, you know, everyone's different. Play around with different head positions. See what works for you. Tresson has a much more upright position. There could be a wall right in front of Tresson and he wouldn't hit it at all because he does such a great job of forcing those knees out. All that really means though, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's the strongest guy in the group. All it means is that he has the most potential. So if he's willing to put the work in and put the time in, there's no telling what he could squat. He's gonna have he's gonna have less limitations than other lifters. Here's Ryan Spencer. This is pretty much a max effort day for him. So he actually does a little bit of a combination of getting in some good volume. He'll get some sets in, but then he'll also work up. And so his sets are obviously going to be done a lot slower than the rest of us. And a little bastard only weighs like 160 pounds soaking wet. This is Ben. He's an Olympic lifter that's been lifting with us for a little while now. Working on some deadlifts, trying to work on some brute strength. Olympic lifters don't uh, very often get to work on uh, that type of strength, static strength, isometric strength. They're kind of always... Uh, more speed and form, agility, flexibility. So he's just mixing things up a little bit by training with us, but he's still doing his Olympic lifting. You can see how explosive Treston was on those. I mean, he's getting done in those two reps with uh, what most of the rest of the group is, is doing in one rep. Here's Ryan Spencer moving some big weights. We all tease Ryan about his size, but honestly, the guy sometimes looks like an ant when he's moving these weights. I mean, look at look at how much weight's on there compared to his body frame. It's really pretty extraordinary to watch him lift. With Austin Baumgarten, he's working on uh, going a little bit wider. I feel that there's a lot of guys in our gym that could benefit from working on going a little bit wider. And that's what I'm doing on these sets. That's why I look like I'm gonna die. That uh, fat red face of mine, that's that's the, the face of death. I'm working on going wider. I have kind of a bum hip that's ready to blow out any day. And uh, so I'm just trying to strengthen that up. 
trying to get myself better. Here's G Buff, Greg Buffington. Always working his ass off, always working hard. Working on trying to get Greg a, an 800 pound squat coming up. And this is pretty much one of the tallest human beings on the face of the earth. Taco truck. Taco truck is just starting to learn powerlifting gear. He had decent squat form before. And uh, because he had pretty good form before, before he got into the squat suit, or before he got into the briefs, he's able to maintain that form. And there's a good shot right there of, of uh, a little bit of the rounding that I do when I squat. You know, if I, could, if I could pinch that upper back a little bit tighter and stay a little more upright, I'd be able to push into the bar straighter. I'd be able to have a better, more efficient bar path. Also in the study that, that was done for Power Magazine that you'll see coming up, um, it also showed a 14 degree uh, back, uh, 14 degree back change from a raw squat to a suited squat. So in the in the case of the raw squat, people were leaning forward 14 degrees further than when they were in their squat suit with their straps up. So again, that just goes to show you this is all about positioning and all about maintaining leverages. If you can maintain your leverage, if you don't have to lean over the, those uh, 14 degrees when you're raw. You're going to be able to push into the bar more effectively. You're going to have a much more effective squat and a much better chance to squat big weights. And you see, even though I'm kind of limited with some of, some of my uh, range of motion, that bar is still not moving around a ton from front to back. So still doing a decent job of, of keeping it in alignment with my hips. Dressing going again. We kept the weights uh, pretty light on this day. We didn't really work up a whole lot. We got up around five and a half plates or so. I think Tristan might have even just kept it at about five plates. I just got done with the meat, so I'm trying to rebuild everything. You know, after you get done with a contest, strength levels are way up, and sometimes your conditioning levels are down a little bit, or just sometimes your drive is down a little bit. You know, anyone who tells you different is full of shit. You get done with a contest and you kind of have post-contest blues, whether you do good or bad, you know, you're kind of like, all right, now what the fuck do I do? You're not really sure where to turn next or what to do next. And so the safest and best thing to do is just to keep the weights moderate, keep the weights light, and just keep training, and then refocus. Get yourself ready for another contest. Or just get yourself ready for to focus on something new whether it's losing weight, gaining weight, whatever it is. See how wide that stance is for me. That's really brutal for me to work on that. You see the knees are even coming in a little bit. Not not very safe, <laughs> not a very safe thing to do. But it's something I feel is necessary to get me to the next level. Look how high up that monolift is when he's squatting. Tressen does a great job with his with his upper body. His upper body's not moving a whole lot. Just pretty much his lower body. Ryan Spencer does a good job getting himself tight. And he's kind of got no choice because he just doesn't have the body mass that Tressen or I do. So he better get himself tighter. He'll go flying right through that freaking box. There's Taco Truck going again. Taco Truck is squatted 562 in a contest raw. We're going to work, try to work on getting him mid sixers or 700 pounds in his first meet out. Forcing those knees out is crucial, even on the way up. If you go back and rewind that last set and take another look at it, you'll kind of see that forcing the knees out is crucial on the way up, just as it is on the way down. And there we are just talking more shit to each other back and forth. Try to make it fun, try to stay loose. Contest should be the same way. You know, you get to the contest, there's no reason to get too tense or too crazy because you should already know how to do the lifts. Tressa doing some cardio, three reps. Good for the old ticker. Here's Spence now going with. Uh, around 555 pounds or so. 
Plus, there's three chains per side. Looks like Tresson Scholl is trying to cop a feel there a little bit, getting overly excited. Whoa! Not sure what happened there, but looked like Tresson uh, figured that'd be a great time to give him a reach around. I don't know. So I had to outdo Spence, so I went up to 545, and I, and I added an extra heavy, thick boating anchor chain. Look at that thing's huge. Not going to let that little bastard beat me. And that's it from supertraining.tv.